You alright there guys, how are we getting on? Um, so today I wanted to do a little bit of a talk about um, <clears throat> how um, the universe uses bad things in our lives or unfortunate events for our ultimate bettering and uh, to further you know, our journey and growth in life. Um, so I wanted to refer to the example of Jesus. Um, so... We're all familiar with the story of Jesus and how, you know, he ends up on the cross. Um, but what's really important about that is that um, on the surface, um, what happened on the cross could have been seen as, you know, uh, well, it was, obviously was a bad event. Um, possibly the worst event, you know, how, how there's not much worse that could happen to you than being crucified. Um, but we see clearly how um, God was able to use the very worst possible event, which was his son being crucified to um, create what some might consider as, as the best event in history, which was, um, you know, the illustration of his unconditional love on the cross and then his subsequent um, uh, ability to rise from the, from the dead and um, leave a legacy that has, has changed lives all over the world and, has been helping people for uh, thousands, of, well, two thousand years. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to touch on some elements of the story and how they um, actually, you know, have, have helped people, uh, or yeah, or how 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 um, his message was was uh, distributed through those elements. So funny, something you'll often find in life is. Um, you don't see it at the time, but the unfortunate events actually are aiding your ultimate goal. Um, so Jesus obviously came to earth with a plan. There, there was a, there was a plan for what he was going to do and, um, what he was going to live out. Um, the goal was always the same to show people his love and to create that powerful story that we can then follow and use an example. Um, but to do that, he would need... Um, an aid, let's say, um, or a platform. And it's funny how the, the motives of evil um, aligned with the motives of, of love and good. So the Roman soldiers wanted to make an example of Jesus, and Jesus wanted to make an example of himself. Jesus wanted to be an example. So obviously the whole point of crucifixion was there was making an example of the individual who had violated the laws of the land or violated the Roman authority and um, putting them up, crucifying them was the act of doing that, making an example to all the people around so that all the people could see what happens when you when you do this. And, and that's what they achieved. They achieved that aim. Um, but ultimately, that wasn't really the aim that 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 wasn't really what came through. Uh, because what came through was Jesus's ability to forgive those people that were killing him on the cross. And that's what the people really saw um, when they look at it. They saw um, his love, you know. So Jesus actually was using them to achieve his ends. And that's very powerful, you know, the fact that he was actually using evil to achieve his goals um and there's so many elements that then come into that i mean uh the act of of putting him up high for instance was again to make an example of him they wanted everyone to be able to see what was happening they wanted it to be a spectacle jesus also wanted to have a spectacle he wanted to make a spectacle of his love he wanted to be put up high where everyone could see him and everyone could um, take in what he was doing and celebrate it. Um, he wanted to be seen. Um, and that's what they allowed him to be able to do. Um, obviously, in making an example of him, they wanted to show the damage that they could inflict upon him. They wanted to cause him a lot of pain and suffering, obviously, which they did. But that was the perfect opportunity for him because he wanted to show his love in the face of 
hate. And that's what it gave him the chance to do. So all the while that they were doing that, it was simply magnifying his love because he was able to show his full glory in terms of what uh, his love was capable of. Um, obviously, Jesus on the cross there, his body represents the, the broken heart of God, so destroyed and broken by our behaviour towards him, but yet still able to love and remain vulnerable with his arms outstretched and his, his heart exposed in the face of... Um, in the face of that violence. Um, so yeah. Um, other elements to it. Obviously they place a crown of thorns on his head. And drive it in. To to mock his, his kingship. Um, but what they really do. Is they provide a powerful illustration. Of what kingship really looks like. For them being a king. Was all about power. And about looking the part. And looking good. Whereas Jesus showed that kingship is about service and um, the crown of thorns symbolised that. His kingship was a different kind of kingship. It was a kingship that was laying itself down for others. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the, na the nails that they drove into his wrists, obviously for them that was there to pin him or make him look like he couldn't, he couldn't move. Um, for him it symbolised the fact that he couldn't move. In terms of like, regardless of what we do to him, his love holds him in place. He can't back down from us because his love for us is stronger than the pain that we inflict upon him. His love is unconditional. So regardless of what we do, he's held there. Um, he won't go. He won't go anywhere. That was what it was symbolic of. He he won't move. Um, he can't be moved, and um. So, yeah, all these factors play in. Um, so I suppose ultimately the point is, again, to reinforce that Jesus was using them. Um, Jesus was using evil to achieve his ends and to achieve his mission and to fully illustrate his love and the power that he had as an individual. Um, you know, his glory. So, yeah, um, I hope that's helpful in understanding the story and hopefully it offers a bit of encouragement as well. Cheers.